Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Arizona Real Estate News. We managed to eke out another week. And somehow during our intro, we managed to lose Ruby. <laughs> but we do know from She's there. I can hear her breathing. I know. I'm frustrated. Hi, anyhow. everybody. Sorry. I don't know what happened again. It, it wouldn't be a show if you didn't pop in and out like that. So it just, uh, <laughs> it's something we've just become accustomed to, uh, you know, to, to, to looking for. So, but... Yep. Uh, um, and Patsy, they're sleeping or frozen. Oh, there he oh, is. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Pat, Pat just, Pat's right what there, very still. Yeah, he, uh, he stays very still. We did that uh, to my boy's mother one Christmas. Um, they, She says, oh, I wish I could be there to open up their gifts. And she is with her husband. I said, I'll tell you what, we'll put you on the big screen. You can watch them open their gifts. And at one point, my middle son says, yeah, I think we're ready, Dad. I was sitting off the side. I said, okay, I'm going to count to three. And I go, one, two, three. And they all just froze. It didn't move. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh, I think we lost the connection. Oh, did it freeze? What do we do? Do we reboot? <laughs> one of them wants to blink and her husband goes, I think they're faking it. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's funny. It was a little fun. I thought with all the news that, that we were seeing that I – I take a look at the our market because there's just there's so much chatter out there. You know, the this bank's going down. Is it going to be a contagion? Blah blah blah. And after a while, you just go. Let me just circle back to where we're at here because we already yeah. found out that we're the second highest in inflation in the country in Arizona. Our inflation rate was eight, and our wages went up by five. So we're not winning that game here in Arizona. And then the Fed's kind of between a rock and a hard place now. If they raise rates more, are they going to be hurting more banks? And and are they really going to lower rates? And you can find an article that says either one of those scenarios are going to happen. But I thought that when we saw rates creep back up to seven, that the spring market would go bye-bye. And uh, um, I don't know which one of you is in charge of tallying how many times I'm wrong, but I'm wrong. And so, I, you know, I'm looking at this here and, you know, this is my seven day moving average. And somebody asked me to put in like showing last year. So there's last year. And you can see that our sales, the yellow line are, you know, they're definitely lower, but not by much. And they've actually come up a little bit. They went from 3,100 to 3138, you know, over the past seven day average. But look at our new listings again. They, they just keep coming down. And they're so tight now that um, unless that changes, uh, we're going to see pricing pressure. So there's a few things that, that I'm looking at that kind of shout out to me just how resilient would that be the word you'd use to describe the market right now? Yeah. I mean, you just can't beat it down. Um, so you start here and you look, here's the price reductions. They aren't going up. They're down like 2,700 now on my seven day. Whereas when we first had the rate increase, we're sitting there. And God bless you. 3,500, yes. And uh, we've Sorry. all got, you're catching my cold now. So anyway, your price reductions are not going we're all going to get it through, all, through these microphones. <laughs> pretty, pretty soon. Gosh darn it, Ruby. Don't come don't online have, when you're sick. I don't have a cold. I don't have it's a cold. Gonna, Pat's going to be sick in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, I'm going to be that sick. Yeah, just goes <laughs> to show you how good our connections are these days. Yeah. But look at the contract ratio. It's not going down. It's going up. So, again, people aren't lowering their prices like they used to. More home, the contract, more success on the contract ratio. And you can pick, compare that to other, other years. But we're down here around the 2015, 16, 18 levels. Not bad. Um, Cromford Market Index. You know, people that bought in November with the, you know, probably you're feeling pretty happy right about now. And we've said before, you never really know you hit the bottom until you look back three months. Well, December, yeah. January, February, you know, it looks like we hit a bottom. I don't know if it's the bottom. And then I think finally so. here, this is my favorite one. And when I want to use the red pen, it doesn't work. But right here, look. The red line, which is sales going up, inventory going down, that says upward price pricing pressure. And so <clears throat> what's what's going on, Pat, with 
with rates, I mean, this week was bouncing all over the place, but are we, are we finally getting through all the bad news and starting to level out? Can I throw a question at Pat since he's going to be talking about this? Because it's a dollar a question, but yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll I'll drop it through in a second. Uh, I was super surprised, Pat, and I was hoping maybe you could talk about this that the UK raised fifty basis points. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised. I mean, Barry had said that uh, you know <laughs> they don't care. I mean, they're just moving forward. Um, so I, that that came out of the blue. I know. So that's obviously we'll see what happens. That's going to have a see how that has an impact on next week with the Fed's meeting, March twenty second. So, um, yeah, you think they kind of work in concert together, but um, yeah, it's kind of a mystery. Barry was kind of surprised by it too. <laughs> he said, you know, he's like, they're just doing what they're doing over there. So um, he, I think he's in comments here. Um, he said the ECB, you know, decided to hike 50 basis points, not caring about the banking crisis in Europe, while they did not commit to any further hikes. He goes, uh, yesterday, the financial contagion risk spread to the Credit Suisse, their largest share after their largest shareholder. So they wouldn't raise their stake. So, you know, it says, will our Fed have to cover to continue hiking on March 22nd? We hope they don't or do a 25 basis points clearly explain that they are done after that. So, Sorry. you know, I think it caught you know, obviously caught people by surprise. But, I mean, what's interesting is um, the markets today, I mean, we're seeing some – I'm going to pull up the rates here. Uh, let me show the chart on the rates, if I can make sure I get the rates versus the price because uh, I'm trying to do that a little bit better. So it's conforming with people thinking. Give me one second here. I mean, you're seeing – you know, we saw a high here hitting four, but we've seen this nice downtrend here recently. And now we're just seeing some consolidating. If I pull it out, um, the rates, let me, I'm going to pull it out six a year. And you see how we kind of, we're tipping up, you know, I said the fours. And now we're consolidating. There's some, some troughs in here around uh, 3.39. Right now we're sitting at uh, 3.55. So it's, Looking good for rates. Rates have been kind of sitting around, they tipped around seven and a quarter, seven eight, seven and a quarter. Obviously, some other banks were higher, but now we're sitting at about six and five a six and three quarters. So um everybody, you know, they're just waiting. I mean, really, um, you know, the PPI numbers came in down, you know, the other day, um, showing that uh, you know, Barry was saying that he still thinks the Fed is over medicating right now, but he says this this Banking crisis is going to lead to a lot of internal, um, you know, tightening within banks. They're going to do less lending, basically. The capital requirements are going to do less lending, which is going to tighten the market. So and he said the short-term yield curve is still, you know, inverted. It's getting de-inverted here as we kind of speak. But um, once again, Paul is just basically saying, he, you know, back actually – it's kind of interesting. Barry had said that Powell back some time ago, you know, said he was not concerned. I mean, he said this probably, I don't know, several months ago. He said he wasn't concerned about the short term inversion. But um, I think he is now. So, yeah, there's and there's less. The thing it is, when you get volatile markets, you get less liquidity and the movements. The VIX, the volatility index has been it's actually higher now than it was in 2020. So we're seeing a lot of volatility in rates. Um, you know, I, I think uh, the Feds. You know, I've any. You know, just me guessing down here in Chandler, Arizona. But you know, I, they're definitely. I think the fifth, the fifty bit uh, thing is off the table. I mean, they still might. They're still concerned about inflation. Um, I something in my. I'm, I've never read this, but this is just my kind of my internal theory that they're stuck on this two percent inflation rate. And that I don't know how long that theory has been sitting around, but um, I think they have to change that number because um, you got wages built in now. Um, we've got a lot of built in inflation that's going to be around for a while. And I think the two percent level, I, I just think that I'd like to know. I'm going to do some research that, on that. That started in New Zealand, from what I understand. Yeah. OK. I mean, I, I have to do some research on that, but I think they're going to have to readjust that number. I mean, it's just, you know, to say. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that we got to get down to this number before things turn is just kind of a, I don't know, that's just kind of a, um, because I mean, that's just basically some guy sitting in a boardroom, the Federal Reserve saying, uh, we need to get down to 2%. Well, maybe it's, if we get down to maybe three, two and a half, three, that might be good enough. Well, are we, and and if this week kind of illustrated every anything to me, it's kind of like, are we going to reach the point where the Fed is forced? Uh, because, I mean, you know, what are, what are the choices? Um, major bank disruptions and closures and credit freezes or inflation. And I think inflation gets kicked and delayed yeah. if that were to get much worse. Because I don't know if you remember Black Monday in 1987 when Alan Greenspan was the uh, – was the uh, head of the Federal Reserve. And we went down, you know, a whopping 600 points in one day, which today is, you know, a natural that, occurrence. That was my six, I, that was my, that was, I remember that because that was my six month, six month in the business of being a stockbroker. I was a new stockbroker and we were sitting around our terminal. Just, we were literally um, almost puking watching the, the market go down like 600 points. It was like, now it's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> well, but I don't know if you remember, but Alan Greenspan, he called um, major banks and because we were within hours of our credit markets completely freezing up and the mm -hmm. economy collapsing just within hours, if not minutes. And he was working the phone banks and having people calling going, we've got you back. We've got the reserves. We're going to keep you liquid. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. And if he hadn't injected all of that cash that we wouldn't have recovered, we would have had a, a credit freeze. So now I look now and I go, okay, so we had that one bank go down then the next bank go down. And then right away, the chatter comes up and says, well, are they going to have to pivot now? Are they going to lower rates? And I'm thinking, I don't think they're going to do that. It's going to make them look like idiots. But, you know, they, they may not go up at all. So it's going to make that meeting very, very interesting. And if, so I was I a betting, if I was a betting man, I mean, the scenario, the half a point's off the table, I think um, – what they might do is have language in there say, um, and this is just me um, saying this, but they're going to say we're not going to move move now, but we're going to put language and say that we still are, you know, on the the path of a quarter, you know, the 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 you know the path right now of we just want to let things settle, see where they go, but you know we're still on this path of you know, of knocking out inflation that so keeping the door open of you know we're gonna, we're going to resume the quarter point um, maybe down the road. Well, and they put a new um, Fed Bank facility, which basically allows banks to borrow um, and borrow on the asset value of their bonds. It's very complicated, but it just kills me. They just set up a whole new facility here. Here, we got money over here. You can you can borrow from that, and you can mm -hmm. pay us back later. It's like, man, yeah, get, well, get you do that for me. Debt. You do that for me. You do that yeah, for me too. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no, I think I think uh, but people have to realize like Barry brings up a point of that all this volatility within the banks is going to constrict uh, their lending uh, capacity and their lending ability and their their willingness to lend because they're going to basically they're going to shore up their capital and that's going to tighten up, you know, certain loans, business loans. Um, so he goes, that's they're, they're, that could be a contraction just on itself as far as they're not as loose and happy free with uh, money. Yeah, well, that's probably a good thing. So, but every president, with the exception of maybe one or two, has had to get in front of the television and say, "Our banks are sound," and they do that when the first or second bank has trouble, and then after that, the wheels fall off the wagon and the whole system goes to hell. But they always start out with, "Our banks are sound." Janet Yellen yesterday, we're still good, you know. Uh, President Biden, our banks are sound. Well. Uh, Reagan had to say that. Clinton had to say that. Bush had to say that before 2008. So it's just it's just in the playbook, you know. They open up and go, "Oh, what do I say?" So um, everything's sound. <laughs> so exactly. So speaking of our market, though, Jackie Ruby, um, we were talking about how hard it was to determine a list price on the house when things are starting to come down pretty good, a pretty good clip from. From March. So what's it look like today? Are our comps helping? I mean, can we, is it easier, harder? It really depends on the area. So there are certain areas where we're seeing contracts come in over list price again. We're seeing some multiple offers come in again. And 
I think when we're looking at comps, we just did comps on a property the other day. We went back to December 1st, but mm -hmm. putting a lot of weight again, still on under contract and pending. But then you have to even look at how long has it been under contract and pending and how many days it was on the market and how many price reductions did they do? Because I've seen some where, you know, they did a whole bunch of price reductions before the holidays, but we were at a standstill, nothing was happening. And then they get to a price and they're in, at that price during the holidays, still nothing happening. But as we all know, the markets, you know, we have no inventory. It keeps dropping. I mean, not that we have no inventory, but we don't have enough inventory. And now I'm seeing multiple offers again. So it it's getting a little difficult to comp. Um, and we're telling people we need to be right at market price or right below because with the way activity is picking up again, you'll see the market pull it up. They'll determine what the value is. Well, Ruby, what are you seeing? I know you do a lot in the new build community. Eh? Seeing any movement there? Are they raising prices, no lowering, not being as aggressive? What's uh um no, not a lot of um updates coming in from the new builds, just their weekly inventory from a few of the builders that I'm I've built pretty good connections with. They're still offering their realtor commissions, um, just a steady increase. Um, on their inventory homes that they have in production. So, but what I just got incentives. Incentives are still, um, they're just kind of following along with the same as they've been doing. So, but not increasing them. No, no. They're just um, buying down the interest rates. That's still their biggest thing is giving enough incentive to towards their closing costs and buying down the interest rates. So well, and I've seen some surveys that builder sentiment is uh, is increasing. It's up, it's up. and uh, so it's very interesting. So I think you know the the bumper sticker is for now going into spring. Um, we're not seeing a declining market. I mean, I can't find one number that says that things are getting worse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so exactly. I tried to take a very pessimistic view of the market this week and looking at the numbers. Let let me find the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. And I, I, I don't see one yet. Um, yeah. So, I mean, but if we did learn anything, you know, things can swoop out of nowhere and change the whole dynamics of the market. Uh, this one looked like it was going to, you know, knock us in the head, but it didn't. Well, it goes yeah, back like, to I think that the, the area really is, is huge. For example, the 55 plus communities, they're still just moving. Um, they're competitive. There's multiple offers. I just got one accepted last weekend out in, uh, um, gosh, what's it called? <laughs> Off of uh, Bell and um, Fiesta. 176. No, yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know. Off of Bell and or 300 and third, the 303. 100, 176th Avenue. Anyway. That's Los Angeles. That's Los oh Angeles. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm having a brain freeze. I literally just left the home inspection and came here, but um, we still we were able to get seller concessions. Um and there's, you know, the the properties in there are moving. But right now is when those people are getting ready to leave for the season and they're unloading their properties if they're never coming back again. You know, maybe this is the last time they're gonna be able to travel or um you know, it doesn't make sense for them to come out anymore. So this is when the inventory is increasing in that neighborhood. Speaking of home inspections, and I know my seller is probably going to watch this. And we're recording this on Thursday. Usually we record it on um, Happy Wednesday, Trails Resort. On. Sorry, Rick. What's it's that? Happy, it's called Happy Trails Resort. Happy Sorry. Trails Resort. Okay. I'm I know get it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we got the buyer's inspection report, uh, um, the Benzer and the response from the buyer and it they, they want everything done and i thought did that really return to our market because remember when things were brisk you know they weren't asking for any repairs i mean this house was built in 1978 and they they want there's no stoppers in the bathroom well they're 29 cents at home depot okay <laughs> um there there's uh the, the there's scratches on the door where the dog door is um off the utility room they want a new door no <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's the agent's fault, too. It's our responsibility. Our contract's written as is for the most part. So 
that a lot of that falls on the agent by not guiding their borrower in the right direction too. Well, I think I found out the problem this morning where it was and we're, we're punching through. There were some major things that we had to, had to get done, but um, the dad lives in Chicago. He's loaning her the money to buy the house. So he's, he's saying everything needs to be fixed before she moves in. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> one of the bedroom doors doesn't quite latch. <laughs> the house is probably safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, it was I, I started drinking early. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. I think, I think part of the problem is too, is, you know, in all my years, I've never seen markets change as much as we have. And in, in the last three years, it goes yeah. up, down, sideways, every which way. And you run into a lot of people that aren't staying on top of it daily. And they don't realize, you know, that suddenly this area is getting multiple offers and going over list price. And they're just, they're un, and even agents I'm running into that yeah. they just don't stay on top of what's happening. And if you don't, you, you got problems right now in this market. Yeah, absolutely yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. You hear some wild different, uh, you know, theory or um, wild, like, yeah, I, you know, I heard the market's doing this. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> it's just it like 30 days ago. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, this has been moving the last couple of years. It's almost like it's, you got to really watch the game the whole way. Um, if you're not, and like I said, if you're working with a part-time, part-time person, you're going to get part-time help, you know, um, service. It's just, I mean, um, you're gonna, yeah, Pat, you're going to, it's a deficit if you're not working with an agent that, or, or a lender that's on top of it daily. Yeah. Well, because I was it's fortunate changing this agent's got so 21 much. years experience, but she was, uh, you know, she finally admitted today that it was dad. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there's plenty of real estate memes out there about dads. And uh, <laughs> during the inspection period, during the inspection period. Yeah. yeah there's a meme that's like, so you got the late, you got the, the person who's buying the house and you got the dad up in the attic and, you know, just crawling up there. And so, yep. So they gave us a list <clears throat> and, uh, along with estimates and the estimates were nuts. You know what an anti-siphon valve is. It goes on the right hose, on the right? hose bib. You screw yeah. it on with your hand, take a screwdriver and you just tighten it. It's a set screw. You're done. Yeah. $65. What? Yeah. They're like yeah. $7 at Home Depot and most people take them off anyways because they're and, a pain. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking 65, I want that job. Oh and, my God. You know, bathroom stoppers, 150 bucks. <laughs> yeah, we could start our own new business. Yeah, the, yeah. The installing the simple items for you for That's less. That's right. Or, yes, yes. Our company's called Screw You Too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -huh. hey, check this out. Since we're YouTubers, <laughs> this I found was interesting, and that is <clears throat> network of YouTube financial influencers hit with class action suit for pumping up FTX. These are YouTubers. Some of them, if you watch YouTube finance stuff, like have you ever seen Meet Kevin? Yes. Okay. He's in the suit. Have you heard of Graham Stephan? Yeah. He's in the suit. And all these guys, and they're saying, and there's a talent agent or creators agency too. And uh, they're saying the group of influencers, several of whom have millions of followers on YouTube and other online platforms, never made much secret that they were being paid to promote FTX on their channels before the crypto exchange collapsed and major, major fraud allegations came. So you're a YouTuber out there and you're pushing stuff um, that, you know, be aware. You, you, you can get big trouble because, you know, people look at, you know, these guys like, like me, Kevin's got a jet now, you know, I don't know why he needs a jet, but he's got a jet. And he's always got his jet behind him. And so people follow them religiously. So if they say something's a good buy and, uh, you know, you'll you'll do it. And even Jim Cramer on MSNBC was was pumping that uh, SVB bank uh, a month before it collapsed. So he probably won't get sued. But in this case, they're making direct connections to them being paid mm -hmm. to promote this cryptocurrency. And me, and, Kevin, always has affiliates on there that he's oh. pushing out. Always. 
he makes a boatload of money off of his affiliate marketing. That's yeah. for, that's for sure. So when the Fed is meeting the twenty second, Pat. Yep. What day is that? That Wednesday. It is um, Wednesday. <clears throat> okay, cool. Wednesday. Well, we will be recording next Wednesday, and we will share the results. And I, you know, it's really interesting to read what people are thinking is going to happen. It was two days ago. It was nope. Uh, even Goldman Sachs said they're they're not going to raise rates. They're probably going to cut a hundred basis basis points. And so now, like Warren Buffett said, you know, when the water goes out of the lake, it's when you that's when you see who's naked. And uh, <laughs> so. So we're yeah. starting to see all the people that panic. They're telling you what the Fed's going to do. And Chairman Powell's just probably sitting back going, I'll just let this wash out and I'll raise it 25 points. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I mean, them raising it's obviously hurt, um, you know, the rates. But if they give, you know, there's going to be an interesting time frame here in the next couple of weeks because if the Fed's give it, you know, give us some indication that, you know, the, you know, they're moving the other way then you know, the short, it's just the fact what's really hurting the banks. It's obviously it's mismanagement of the assets. Cause they had to perform, you know, they had to take out these assets and, and use them somewhere. But um, so basically the feds put them in a pickle, um, you know, so was it really ma bad management? You know, it's like nobody can predict it, but the feds put a lot of banks in that predicament. So, once we get that scenario under control, then, you know, hopefully the banks can get some type of uh, stabilization. But um, I was surprised to see Dodd part of this whole thing. I mean, that's was mind blowing to me. You mean yeah. the Dodd Frank rule? <clears throat> well, he's actually on the board for SVB. Oh, oh, okay. That figures. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Make this make, make the rules and then get in and take advantage of it. So. Yeah, I mean, so like you said, it's you know Barry. Barry's been kind of looking behind the scenes. He thinks inflation is you know obviously the shelter costs are behind the eight ball. We're going to still see a lag effect from the shelter costs, which is about I think it was forty percent of the one number. Um, the CPI, the shelter, shelter. Well, I think well one number I can't remember which one it was, but uh, you know basically shelter costs are they're lagging. So he said they're coming down. So. Barry's looking at the fact that uh, the inflation is coming down, but you got the Fed's tightening, so it's. Um, I got a question, Pat. So I heard they're doing quantitative easing again, and my concern, and I'd love to know what you think would happen if we continue to <clears throat> struggle with building up inventory, and I think even with the rates coming down in the six and a half range, if we get closer to that six. I think the market's going to pick back up again and we're already seeing increases in prices. The only the, place the, we're really seeing relief is in rentals. What happens with inflation then if suddenly we're in a position where because of lack of inventory, our prices start going up dramatically? I, I think it's, and you know, not to get political, I think the inflation is all energy based. I mean, it's if we loosen up the energy, I mean, it loosen up a lot because everything is delivered. Everything is, based on oil and gas. But Barry had said that um, if we get the sweet spot for activity, um, he'd mentioned this in one of his uh, briefings, that he said the sweet spot really is the 5 to 6% range for interest rates. Because now people in the 3 3.5% range, if the rates get down to around 5, 5 and a quarter, they can, they can actually justify, okay, I was at 3.5, but I'm going to maybe even the high 4s, they can say, okay, I can handle that. Um, that's kind of, you know, he, but he said five to 6% range is that sweet spot of people loosening up inventory to move. Cause right now, I mean, you do, like you said, they, there's been surveys like, you know, are you going to move? And, you know, like I said, I was talking about this interest rate lock wreck. I mean, remember, I mean, you're uh, over a year and a half ago. Yeah. I said, that's going to be a problem. I mean, you got 36 to 37, 38 million people that are at four and a half percent or lower. Um, if they're at four, the people at four, four and a half, if rates get down to five, five and a quarter, they're gonna be like, okay, I can handle point, point and quarter. I'm gonna sell my house and loosen up. So that that's he said that's the kind of the point that it will loosen up. But you know, I don't think the Feds they they gotta stay in their own lane about trying to influence uh, housing prices. I mean, it's um they should just stay in their own lane. <laughs> yeah, I was uh 
um, talking to somebody yesterday. I can't remember where. And he goes, well, <clears throat> you know, the federal government's got to come in and do something about house prices. And I go, yeah, they, you know, there's something they should do. Just get out of it. I said, yeah. let, let, let the market make adjustments. I go, you know, I, I and he goes, well, no, no, they, they need to do something. I said, no, no. It was like, like Jack Kemp once said, if it wasn't for the federal government in housing, you wouldn't need the federal government in housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's taxed everything from the day the trees cut down to, you know, everything. It's just, and I get it. We got to raise taxes and all this stuff, but there's so much regulation and stuff that, that, you know, asking them to come in and regulate prices, uh, show me one entity where that's worked, where the federal yeah. government says, okay, we're going to like, yeah. remember in, in, uh, the early eighties food, you can't raise the price of food they, they, they put a cap on it, like your meat. Okay. Your steak, you, you can't raise the price of the steak. So Safeway came out with Safeway select premium steak it's the same cut of meat they just changed the name and raised it 50 cents a pound mm -hmm. and so you you started seeing you can't raise the price but the snicker bar got smaller so my point is that that whenever the government comes in and tries to regulate something the market will find it's it's Play working around. Around. Mm -hmm. yep. so rent control in new york rent control in los angeles you know landlords find find a worker they don't want you to stay there very long they want you to rent maybe a couple of years and they want to boot you out so that they can raise the rent because mm -hmm. that's the only time they can raise the rent is when you move. Yeah. So renters are saying, boy, I hope they don't kick me out. I hope they'll renew my lease. Well, they have incentive for you to not renew your lease. Yeah. So well, the Fed, they can only go up 5%. The feds are, the feds, I mean, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have been in conservatorship since what, 2010. And they've been paying back the Fed. I mean, the Fed is, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you look at their balance sheet, um, they've got billions and billions and billions of dollars. They're doing well. <laughs> so they're feeding the Treasury. And the, the, I don't think the federal government wants to let, let them go. Um, you know, they, I'm sure they could, they could have been released from conservatorship probably, you know, um, eight years, years ago. ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. But they're not. They're not. They're like, when I mean, you got billions coming in because they can, you know, they're. You know, they raise the fees, you know, here and there with the you know, the loan level pricing adjustments. You know, if you got a credit score of this, you know, but, you know, it's funny. I was going to mention this on Friday's show, but uh, just yesterday they they delayed. They were going to do a pricing hit for the debt to income ratio oh, being over, yep. over 40 percent. But um, they delayed that to August 1st. So basically it, show, it goes to show you how they could just uh, obviously they want to do it. They don't want to tighten up the housing market. You know, um, they don't want to put another kink in the market. Obviously, they're obviously what's going on in the last couple of days has probably had some influence, but they delayed it to August 1st to do that because it would have been another kink um, in the housing. You know, it's it's a small thing, but it's had a, yet a big thing in, on our side that what they did, the you know, a couple months ago, you know, you know, the different credit score tranches and the debt to income. But I mean, that would have been just another, you know. Um, kink that they threw in. So they, they delay, but it just goes to show you how they could change policy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm and glad they changed, I'm glad they changed that one for the good. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so. folks, everybody have a great day and have a super weekend and we will see you back on here next week. And it's probably going to be wildly different. Who knows? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.